Hello everyone, WolfieCast here, back with another Hero Deep Dive, where I take a hero from Gigantic and go over every single one of their upgrades in their upgrade trees, as well as their Clash Talents, and tell you exactly how they all work, what they do, what they don't do, how you can put them together, and then of course, at the very end, giving you two example builds. It has been some time, I apologize, there's kind of been a few things going on, I've been focusing on other stuff, and also, you know, work related things but we're back and we're actually here this is the first recording that we're doing on like the the updated uh arena like the practice area it's just a nice little extra little textures in the grass here and more vibrant colors it's really pretty anyway we're here with griselma now if you haven't watched the griselma basics video i highly recommend watching that before this i'm going to link that uh in the description below so if watch that first, then come back to this after. If you have already watched it, then we're going to get right into the abilities. Uh, kind of the general expectations. Griselma being a summoner support style character, a lot of her upgrades revolve around kind of increasing the capacity of her hands. In fact, almost everything on every ability to some extent gives just the ability to make the portal beast do more, do better. And just that's that's kind of her whole thing. You know, it, it's just kind of a, making the best out of having uh, as much uptime as possible on your portal piece. So we're going to start here on the left mouse button on the left path. It's called Mark of the Master, Tier 1. A portal beast applies shock on beam targets, dealing 15 damage every second for 3 seconds, and then ends with a 45 damage shock in a 2 meter radius. So uh, your normal beam attack just does nothing. I mean, it doesn't do nothing. It does very, very little. Um, and then the portal beasts, whenever they see a creature, just their AI will have them attack the closest thing. And then they're going to prioritize whoever you're attacking. And then they'll also attack faster while you are holding down your left mouse button. But with this upgrade, the shock is applied with their attacks. So when the portal beast lands attacks, the target gets a, uh, a kind of an instance of shock. And these shocks are, um, the shock is unique. It's considered kind of the same ability. So the the two portal beasts don't apply two versions of shock it just kind of resets once it finishes and you you can see that this actually is incredible damage output if you're able to consistently land these attacks on the same person and most likely you know with <laughs> with seeing running into a grizelma hand a nest uh you're probably not going to actually have a lot of the enemies going after those hands and, and sticking around especially if they're going to get shocked and beamed and blasted but that's kind of how it works. It's just a bit of damage increase, you know, good uh, target prioritizing if you can reach them. Because the beam, again, it's not really long range, but if you're able to get it on somebody, you can definitely melt them very quickly. Tier 2 on the left side is called Spanked. Portal Beast supplies major shock on beam targets. Basically, the damage increases from 15 to 20 per second, and then the burst goes from 45 to 60. This is a very negligible damage increase, in my opinion. Uh, but if you do pick it, you know, it's it's kind of hard to notice in this situation just because of the fact that the damage is ramping up so quickly anyway. But uh, it is just a, it's a pretty small damage increase and, and damage is extra damage. I do think that a lot of people will look at this and be like, oh, it just does more damage. It's pretty cool. I do think that the other upgrade, though, is Mark of Survival here on the other side. So on shocked enemy hit uh, heals yourself for 75 healing a second. So you may notice kind of the floating text that might happen. It says I'm getting healed, and then I'm just uh, I'm just getting healed for holding the beam. And it, it does have to be on someone that is currently being actively shocked. So if I were to summon a portal beast down here, and I'm going to quickly just take some damage just to show this, kind of absorb, maybe go down to about a thousand health, and then I'm going to start beaming. And then while I'm while I'm beaming, you can see every second I'm getting 75 healing a tick. This is really good for just kind of sticking in fights, uh, you know, keeping yourself alive, especially if you're able to maintain your beam, because this is a, uh, this is intent, this is dependent on on you applying the beam and then you apply or the portal beast applying the shock. So it kind of all works together and flows very easily because it's all basically, it's all basically being done in the same instance of damage. You know, you're gonna be applying, you're gonna be applying the beam, so your hands will be shocking, and then you're gonna be healing all with one basic ability it's very it's actually really nice this is really helpful uh just kind of in the sticking power of gazelma 
On the right side tier 1 of the LMB, we have Touch of the Master, which is a life-stealing melee attack that heals uh, on enemy hit, heals yourself for 35 health. And then while hit by Reach Out, which is your LMB, your Portal Beast will actually heal over time as well. So you can actually attack the Portal Beast with this ability, and it will give you give them 125 healing per second and also allows them to turn in place. So normally the normally the Portal Beast had like this conical vision. So I'm going to go ahead and, and just do this right here. And if he's not facing Gnosis here, but if I go ahead and get the mark uh, Touch of the Master... Have him attack. You can see he's turning. He now he's looking for Nasus. So this will still apply your. Uh, this will still apply the bonuses of having them as though you're applying the beam. So they're going to get healing. They're going to be attacking faster, and it allows them to turn. So it's actually really useful. The other benefit of this upgrade is that you turn into a melee hero, which means that you get all the benefits of being a melee hero. So you now have a jump attack. You now have dodge attacks. You know, your, your jump attacks in the back can apply cripple. So if you do that, and then, you know, you can dodge left and right, and then do a, a kind of this lunge melee dodge attack. It's it's actually a... It's it's quite funny to see Grizelma, like, swinging around and, and slapping people like this. This is It's really fun. Um, and then the healing, as far as the healing goes, you know, this is not... This does not require your uh, portal beast to be attacking something. This You get this healing no matter what. And you might notice that the floating text says that it's major heal. This is very important to differentiate because major heals are instant bursts of healing. So uh, so why I bring this up is because when you get a, a major healing, you're actually just, you know, getting that your healing instantly. As opposed to just regular sources of healing. Healing over time is considered uh, kind of works the same way, is coded the same way as degeneration effects. So if uh, if you if you don't remember that video or uh, or me discussing that in the past, the way that de uh, degenerations work is that if you have an instance of a degeneration, say is a, a bleed that's doing a hundred damage per second, and then you have a secondary bleed that's only doing uh, maybe thirty damage per second, the second instance of bleed, or rather the the bleeds that are doing the least amount of damage, are going to be at ten percent power. So that instance, so that uh, example of 100 on the first bleed and then 30 on the second bleed, it's actually only 103 because 10% of 30 is 3, and then that's added to the 100. Healing works the exact same way, or at least healing over time. So if uh, this, so the reason this is important is because these count as major healing. Every time that you attack, you're getting healed for 35. It's not 35 healing a second; it's just instant 35 healing. So this is actually like, this is quite good for uh, for being able to do this so just kind of the kind of a quick lesson on on the difference between major heal and uh and normal like healing over time the tier two on the left side here is uh called shielding touch when hit by reach out gain 20 armor and then on enemy hit uh, up here you can see on the top kind of on the top under reach out itself on enemy hit it gives tw uh, 20 armor to portal beast and for self for four seconds and then if portal beast get hit by reach out they gain 20 armor for five seconds so you can use this either way you can have the portal beast now gaining armor they're now healing for a lot and they're attacking super quickly and able to turn and track this is this is really really strong it's a lot of healing the portal beast don't have a ton of health but when they're healing for 125 a second just it's it's really really difficult to take them down and you don't really want to put them like right next to each other i mean this does make it a lot easier to uh to you know make sure that they're both getting uh involved in this but like if you just have the one and then like you can move the other you don't want them like too close to the point where aoe's are going to hurt them but that's also kind of hard to do because you're limited by melee attacking but uh, this is you know this is really strong and then i'm gonna go over here as well you can see they have the armor floating text. You might see the uh, you might see the armor effects on top of them. Now, if I do this over here, I'm getting the armor now, and then they're still getting the armor, but they're not getting the uh, they're not getting the healing. If I do it this way, but they're still getting armor. They're still attacking faster because they're attacking the same thing that you're attacking. This is a this is really nice. But if uh, you kind of go over here, I'll show again. Now they get the floating text of healing over time. You know, then they get the armor boost. It's it's really fun. The other side on this one is called Empowering Touch, which is basically the same thing, 
Uh, it's just not armor. Instead, it's 35% damage to the portal beast for your, and for yourself for 35 seconds. And then getting hit by reach out gains 35 damage for 5 seconds to the portal beast. And this is interesting because um, it actually is slightly different than shielding touch. You actually get the benefits of the increased damage by attacking your portal beast. So the floating text shows the damage boost. You can see the icon there kind of underneath their health bar. They're getting damage boosted, but I'm also getting damage boosted. The way that the other upgrade worked is that it required me to attack someone directly to get the damage boost. But for this one, you actually just get it from hitting your portal beast. And then I can go over here and do the exact same thing. All three of us get the damage boost. Now, this is not like... This is not like super great. I mean, the, the 35 damage boost for the portal beast is actually really strong. Um, I do think that the armor is better just because you're wanting to, if you're, if you're going to go this tree at all, like you're wanting the portal beast to last as long as possible and getting extra mitigation is going to be way more impactful. Plus 35 damage to your like really silly little slaps. It's really not a big damage increase because it's already, it's already doing so little. This is a, this is more of a, this is more of just a fun thing to do. If you want to really just like slap someone to death really quickly. I do think that a shielding touch is a little bit better. Now we move on to the RMB upgrades. Starting tier one on the left side, we have Ambush Hands. Idle Portal Beast gain stealth and health regen. They will heal every second for 100 healing, and they will be basically in stealth permanently until they see something and start attacking. So if I just summon a Portal Beast over here, and it's just looking out that way, it basically becomes invisible right away, and you can kind of see this cool little shimmery particle effect that shows it's healing. It also gets the healing icon uh next to the you know the buff indicator if i summon the second one here you see it's going to start attacking and then I'll, I'll really quick uh go ahead and take out nasus here maybe summon another one in the in the process you see they're both attacking and then nasus gets destroyed and then they instantly enter self and then as soon as they see something they start attacking again this one is can see the mot so i'll just move him down here so he's not attacking things on accident but basically they just enter self and then uh they just basically live forever because they can't be seen uh this is a really good upgrade just because it allows you to put the hands without them really being noticed this is good for kind of setting up positions that zone control element that Uzama is really uh, powerful at you know if you're if you're wanting to hold a specific neutral point like maybe the uh, D point on Siren Strand or or D point on Sanctum Falls. You know you can have these portal beasts ready and waiting in action for when anyone comes up, and they're basically going to be at full health because they're they heal for a hundred. It's it's a it's a lot of healing, and they, all it really takes is for them to be out of combat for like five seconds, and they're uh, back at full health. Now tier two, I'm going to go over this in a minute because it's annoying, uh, and I'll explain why when I get there. But Let's go on the right side here first. This tier 2 is called Smashing Hands. Portal Beasts apply cracked armor when exiting stealth, which is 10 armor and 10 damage per second for 5 seconds. So basically, when they exit stealth for the first time, they're going to uh, they're gonna throw out a kind of the special uh, animation that looks slightly different than the normal attacks, and then that uh, that attack is going to crack the armor. It's actually, um, it's actually broken armor. I'm not sure if that's a bug, or maybe... Um, Maybe it's just mislabeled here in the tooltip. It's not cracked armor. It's broken armor. So it's actually even more armor reduction. And it's uh, and it's even more damage per second. And this is not a this is not an instance where it's, you know, it's this is not an instance where it's two cracked armors uh, equal a broken armor. That, that's a common misconception. That's something uh, that I even I thought for the longest time back in the day. Um, if you apply multiple sources of cracked armor, it doesn't like stack together. So like if three sources apply cracked armor, it's not 30 armor reduction. It's not 30 damage a second. Like it's just reapplying the same debuff. But uh, this is actually this is actually broken armor. So that those few seconds of, of having broken armor, five seconds of broken armor is actually kind of crazy because it's 25% increased f damage taken from all sources. This is a this is a really really powerful upgrade. Uh, now on to the other upgrade on this tree. It's called Grasping Hands. This is probably one of the um, this is probably one of the biggest atrocities of a of an ability upgrade description 
that just does not at all read what it says. This this is something that I had no clue about until I'd messed around. I thought it actually didn't work for the longest time. Um, so what anyway, what this reads, it says on enemy hit, heal self for 100 HP. That's all it says. So you would think this kind of this kind of implies that, oh, every time that the Porta Beast lands an attack, it just gets some health back. That makes sense. That, that That's pretty neat. Uh, that's not at all what it does. Basically, what it does is that the Porta Beast gain this very special attack animation, kind of like the, the Smashing Hands. But the Grasping Hands will launch a volley of like three attacks that look really different, uh, like very, very different um particle effect for these attacks and for each attack that hits the portal beast will heal for a hundred and it just it's it's really convoluted and weird but I'll, I'll show it really quick so watch i'll i'll summon a uh i'll summon a young cyclops here and you'll see the portal beast like watch their attack briefly just a like a different attack animation that looks very different and then hopefully if the uh, if it kind of comes over here, yeah. So now it's aggro on me. It's going to go back. The portal beast enters stealth once more and watch. They have a different, like it's an entirely different particle effect. And then they remain healing. And that's that's all that it does. Like it, it just, they don't heal for every attack that hits. They don't, they don't heal like it. it ugh, I, I hate how this is written. I, I, this is really, this is something that needs to be changed immediately. Like this, this does not at all explain what this upgrade actually does. And it's, it's very frustrating because I thought that this just made the portal beast like heal. They, and technically it does, but it, it just does it in this very specific way that really needs to be elaborated. Anyway, with that tangent out of the way, uh, now we're going to move on to the tier one on the right side of the RMB, which is called Bestial Aura. Uh, Porta Beast buff damage and armor of nearby allies. So the Porta Beast basically gains this small, like, blue radius circle around itself. And if you are within that circle or, or any of your friendly units are in that circle, they gain 10% basic attack damage and 10 armor. So if you uh, if you put one down really quick, you kind of see that, that ring ar around itself. That's where the uh, effective radius is. And then once you leave, you can see that I lose those uh, damage and armor buffs. You can kind of see next to my health bar in the lower left that I'm getting those buffs immediately, and then they leave once I exit. And the, the portal beasts can also buff each other. So if you place them kind of like that, they're actually giving themselves damage and armor just for being summoned next to each other. It's very... This is where kind of the... Uh, this is where one of the more support-heavy focuses on Grizelma comes from. Just kind of the ability to give auras of extra damage and armor um it does sort of it does sort of force the, uh, your teammates to kind of play near them because the buffs leave immediately when you exit so if if you know if if you find that you can put one of these hands uh where your allies are you know usually standing by this is a really nice just basically permanent buff so long as the hands are there and so long as they're in the area of course tier two on the left side we have bestial attunement it's more or less the same thing, just a big improvement. So the 10 uh, the ten basic attack damage and 10 armor increases to 15 basic attack damage and 15 armor. Uh, but now the aura will last up to 3 seconds, even if they leave the ring. So watch, if I, if I go in, I got the armor boost and damage boost as normal. But then when I exit now, I have those two uh, effects still on me for a little while. This is a really nice upgrade because it gives a little more flexibility. It doesn't allow you, it, like it doesn't force you to stay in one spot. And and you know, with the game, with this game being mobility like incarnate, it, this is mobility is super key. Like this allows you to, this allows your team basically to run in and then just kind of get the benefits. They might fight with the hands for a little while, and then they have to reposition. Maybe they'll go over here. They still have the benefit, and then they can kind of dip back in. It's it's really nice. Uh, the other one on this tree is called Bestial Feast. Every six seconds on an internal timer purifies debuffs on allies and yourself, uh, so long as you're in the circle. And then uh, allies that are purified will also heal for 200 HP. Now, this upgrade sounds really, really good on paper, but it has some very key flaws. <laughs> 
the first of all the portal beasts cannot cleanse each other they 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 will they will never ever cleanse each other in in any situation even if they're in like the same radius circle so uh that is that is something important to know and for some reason the portal beasts will not actually purify until they're idle so they have to be not attacking or moving or doing anything and then they will have like this very brief animation where they will take your debuffs from you and then they get rid of them and it's 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 interesting because it forces this kind of weird it, it kind of forces this weird placement where you basically have to put a hand behind cover or behind a wall where it can't see anything and then it makes it so that uh your allies have to go over and then they get that cleanse and by all means if, if you want to do that playstyle, then you can but you're you're really losing the you're really losing the the power of having both hands able to attack somebody that you're attacking because again Griselma's LMB really does not do very much at all on its own like a like 80 percent or more of her damage comes from her hands and if only one hand is able to attack you're basically cutting your damage in half well it's just to go over here to prove the uh the portal beasts don't actually cleanse uh so long as they're attacking i'm gonna stand here get burned and you see i have the upgrade i'm burning right now and he should be healing me or, or cleansing me but he's not and then i'm gonna do this here I'll just move out of the way. And see, that one wasn't attacking yet. So when I summoned it, it cleansed. But it's burning. This portal beast is still not cleansing it. As it's actively, you know, as it's standing there and burning. And then I'll, as we'll kill it really quick. Hopefully it gets one more attack off. You see, the portal beast is not cleansing the other portal beast. Even though it has a debuff. It'll only cleanse allies. So we'll just wait for that Motiga to respawn. And then I'll, we'll kill it again super quickly probably. And just kind of wait. You'll, you'll see, like, the second that they stop attacking, both of them, that's when they're going to cleanse... That's when they're going to cleanse the burning from me. And for some reason, also, this upgrade, like, makes it so that it can no longer attack super fast. Or that might be a bug just by attacking this creature. But watch, as soon as they stopped attacking, they cleanse me. So this is... It's, it's really... It's really nice on paper, but there's just so many loopholes to actually get this to work. I personally prefer Bestial Attunement, but if you if you really can cater that playstyle, like I'm not I'm no one's ever gonna complain about having a purify on the team, especially one that has a six second cooldown. Like this is actually really strong on paper, but I do think that if there was like if there was a moment where the portal beast like stopped and actively like detected that there were debuffs on an ally that they just stop attacking and then purify and then they resume whatever they were doing. But since they don't do that, it's kind of a kind of a meh upgrade, in my honest opinion. Now we will go over the Q upgrades. Starting on the left side, we have Element of Surprise, Tier 1. On summoning Portal Beast in the puddle, doubles the damage that they deal for four seconds. So this is just like when the Portal Beast gets summoned in the Rift Zone, the first four seconds that they're active, they're just doing double damage. Very, very simple, easy to understand upgrade. You can watch. I will summon it. They should get floating text saying that they got a damage boost. And then those couple attacks will do more damage. Just kind of a really good, like, you know, if you need to resummon a portal beast super fast, that portal beast gets extra damage. Very low investment, like pretty nice upgrade in all honesty. Just kind of gives you that uh, bonus and, and since it does double damage, it actually does stack. Because it's not it's not percentage. It actually just makes all the numbers double. Like So this would stack actually with something like Empowered Touch to make them faster. Or then like other upgrades that might give uh, bonus damage output to the hands. This is, uh, this is actually really nice. Very nice uh, Tier 1 low investment ability. Then Tier 2 on the left side, we have Soothing Journey. Uh, the same thing, just now it adds a 500 shield. So it just makes the tier 1 a little bit stronger. Um, Soothing Journey adds 500 HP shield for five, uh, 10 seconds. So watch, I'll summon it again. You can see it has now this little neat uh, bubble. 500 HP appear, uh, 500 shield HP appearing on the uh, health bar. It'll last for 10 seconds or until it gets destroyed, whichever happens first. It's really cool. Just kind of helps uh, the sticking power of the hands. And I think this is probably the better upgrade of the two. But I, they're they're pretty close, honestly. Uh, and just, yeah, it just it just helps make sure that the portal beasts stay alive. Because, again, that's really what you're trying to do in the long run anyway. Like, 
Griselda needs the Border Beast to be up, or she's not doing very much at all. Uh, the other side, though, here is called Portal Call. Uh, on summoning a Portal Beast in the puddle reduces the cooldown by three seconds. And this is a cooldown of Rift Zone specifically. It's not a cooldown of the summon. It's not a cooldown of any other ability. It is the cooldown of Rift Zone. So it will change it from a 10 second cooldown to seven. So this is this is really nice because it makes it so that uh, your RMB goes on a reduced cooldown. And then also your Q goes on a reduced cooldown. So this is, um, this is pretty good. But in my honest opinion, like... I guess you could say that having this up sooner makes it that so you can just keep replacing hands. But at the same time, your RMB goes on a cooldown anyway if one of the hands dies. So sometimes you just have this ready and you really want to use this to summon Portal Beasts if at all possible. Because otherwise it's really not doing very much. Because the, the Rift Zone on its own just has this weird delay before it's actually doing anything. And whenever it is doing anything, it's just... It's easy to it's easy to see. It's really telegraphed. Um, it's easy to walk out of because it's not really a big radius. It doesn't have a very long cast range. So like it's 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 not the best ability on its own. And then this just kind of making the ability come back faster sounds really good. But in practice, I do think that just having a, a hand that appears with a shield every time that you summon one, kind of, I would I would pick shielding touch or soothing journey. Um, almost every time. On the right side, tier one of the queue, we have Shattered Rift. On end, applies a broken armor and buffs the damage dealt. So it'll do a burst of damage at the very end and uh, kind of the enemies that are still in it when the spell ends, they get broken armor, which is 25 armor reduction and then 50 damage for three seconds. And then it does 100 damage at base. It also has a third little bubble there, a tick marker. It says, on summoning a portal base in the puddle, the triggers the on uh, on end effect in instantly. So this is um this is a pretty neat upgrade just because it allows you to do kind of these rapid, quick moments where you're just doing a big burst of damage and then applying cracked armor to everyone inside. And uh, since the since the rift basically stays there, uh even after like the the 80 damage per tick as well as doing the broken armor will uh will kind of stack really quickly uh but at the same time you could argue that if you're able to kind of lock down enemies in place you probably just want to keep it there like that this is that's kind of a bad example because Gnosis was really hurt uh but you know, if, if you're able to have someone locked down in a space for a while, like maybe having a Paco or, or, or a Margrave that can just keep any enemies locked down, it's doing a bit of damage there. And then the on-end effect just does another burst, and then they're broken armor now for longer. So this is just like an armor reduction. If, if they say in the whole thing, this is an armor reduction for basically like seven seconds. It's really strong, uh, but it's kind of hard to pull off because, again... The, the ability is super telegraphed. It's really difficult to ha have any uh, stay in place. As for tier twos, we have a stumbling block on the left here. On end now dazes enemies for 0.5 seconds, which interrupts them. And then it will also knock them up slightly. This is a really, uh, this is a really cool effect. Again, you don't have to summon the portal beast in the space, but summoning a portal beast will have it trigger faster. But you see, as it ends, does that little broken armor? It knocks them up. It push. Uh, it pushes them up. It, you know, dazes them. It's uh, it's really nice. This is this is a neat little effect, and you can you can kind of have this like really interesting combo if you're able to chain them together super super fast. So like, watch. Just basically like right away. And there's a, there's a little bit of a delay there again because it does take a moment before you can actually trigger both spells. But if you kind of catch someone like you know, if you uh. If you lead them in the direction that you think that they might go. Like this that's a really good way to kind of just disrupt what they're doing. And it's it's uh it's really good actually. It's like a it's a pretty significant burst of damage, and then they're taking more damage because they got broken armor. And then, you know, if you disrupt a channeled ability, even better. I, I do think that this is actually a pretty good upgrade. Um it's just kind of hard to pull off properly. And then Rift Burst on the other side here, tier two. Uh, basically increases the end damage to 150. This is this is not a good upgrade. This is probably one of Grizama's like one of the worst Gris, uh, upgrades Grizama has. Um, 
arguably one of the worst upgrades in the game because 50 extra damage is like not a lot especially when it's only like when it only starts at 100 it's just yeah i mean this is something again that you can have pop instantly because you know it triggers on in effects if you summon a portal beast right away but uh yeah this is please don't ever pick this upgrade it is it is really bad like numerically it's it's really bad to pull off properly uh it just nah it if you go this tree at all like there is really no reason to not go stumbling block eventually now on to the e upgrades we have here on the left tier one called conservation of mass using your e summons a portal beast that's that's it very simple so you just kind of stand here you can you can stand anywhere really but just basically when you hide portal beast is left where you stood or where you were standing and then you reappear after or if you cast the ability again you just reappear you still only have a maximum of two portal beasts this is just another way to summon a portal beast so you have more portal beast uptime so instead of just your rmb you can now summon one with e2 and this is not one of those instances where um actually actually i'm not sure if you summon a portal beast with e while it's in the queue well actually i guess you wouldn't really know because it's kind of it's kind of tied to this ability so yeah i oh man i'm gonna i'm gonna try this now if i if i use my q and then my right mouse button and that okay so no that doesn't further increase or that doesn't further reduce the cooldown of right mouse button. I that was something worth testing because I actually didn't know until just now. But no, that will not further trigger like the bonuses of summoning a creature inside of the rift. Uh, it's just kind of its own little instance of summoning a creature, and it's a uh, it's pretty simple, it's easy to use, kind of a very low investment because uh, it's tier one, uh, and then more portal base uptime is always a good thing. Then the tier two on the left side here, we have Gift of Preservation. Uh, inside portals, or while you are inside the portal, all portables will heal 100 healing per second. This is just another one of those instances where just you have more healing. Um, I do honestly think that there are better healing upgrades just for your portal beasts in general. Like the the slap hand, uh, the slap granny is a really strong healing. Um, this might be overkill, but it you know if if you're if you're really needing your hands to survive, like if they're constantly getting attacked, like this is, this is really good because it also, it also heals you. Um, because the the ability on its own always heals you anyway. So this is you know healing for yourself, healing for uh, healing for your hands. Oh, and I do want to bring up as well. Uh, for some reason, I think this might be I think this might be another bug, um, but gift of preservation apparently has a range. So I'm going to pick it up really quick and I'm going to put a portal beast down here and then uh, and then I'm going to summon a uh, Cyclops. So if I summon a Cyclops over here and then he's sitting there and he takes some damage and I go in the portal beast or go into my E, he's got some healing. He gets 400 healing over the duration because uh, it's just four instances of healing. But watch, I'm going to um, they're going to get destroyed really quick and then uh, I'm going to go ahead and just summon another one once he resets. And I'll show you if he attacks it. Come on, man. Well, anyway, watch if I if I get a certain distance from the portal beast, I'm actually not healing it. So watch, I'm, I'm too far away from it to be uh, to trigger that healing. So it's not getting healed. You have to stay like you have to stay a good, like pretty close proximity to it for it to actually work. So it's a little weird. I, I don't think that's intentional, um, especially when I get to the other upgrade on this on this tree. Because, uh, you know, it, it really should work wherever you wherever you are. Uh, but just good to know that it only works when you're actually close to the hands. The other side of the tier two uh, on this uh, on this tree is called Gift of Annihilation. Inside the portal changes the portal beast attacks to a beam. So these beams will do just like heavy damage over the duration. Um, it's they basically have the same damage output as if you were... Uh, as if you were having the portal beast like attacking faster by prioritizing the same person you are. But watch. Um, unlike the other one, this one will actually cast globally. So if I'm if I'm really far away, even like way over here, I'll kind of get somewhere where you can actually see it still. But watch. He's still doing the uh, he's still doing the beam attack over there. And I'm I'm much further away than I was from the one that was in the pit that I wanted to uh, heal with the other upgrade. So this is this is a this is a really strong 
thing because it allows you to it allows you to basically like you have you have high oops, you have high damage output from uh just having them attack things anyway so you can kind of see that bar just melting and even if i go inside here they're still doing like really strong damage super quickly so that this allows me to like you know hide and heal and not lose dps if you take this upgrade and i do think that this is better than the other one by sure i uh, by far I, I i don't think that you need this one especially with the especially with the tier one on this one being the one that upgrades or uh summons another hand like your hands surviving longer not quite as beneficial because you now have a second way to summon them it's just a just something good to know on the other side tier one on the e is called exit strategy you can cast your E again to reappear at a target location kind of in front of you. Uh, but it also will pull, will put the uh, cooldown of E to 25 seconds. And it's only if you activate again, which is this is a this is an important distinction. Just using the E, e normally for the duration just kind of remain, keeps it on a 20 second cooldown. But activating again is what puts it on a 25 second cooldown. And there's a bit of trade off to this because now you technically can't end your E early. Uh, because just hitting E again will have it reactivate and put it on that longer cooldown. But this gives like some really good mobility um, and uh, just kind of allows you to uh, get in and out of fights a little bit faster if you really, really need to. But watch as I just kind of hide in and then I hit E again and I appear. And this is a, another important thing to know. Um, you can't actually hold the e down a second time to kind of like try to target where you're wanting to go it'll basically pull you out of the e immediately like hitting it at all and you kind of get this targeting reticle in the distance and it sort of suggests that you can take the time to kind of target um but it, it'll just force you out almost immediately and sometimes you don't end up going where you actually intended to go so kind of kind of look where you're wanting to exit like right away and it should in theory put you there every time but watch you see i was just holding down e the whole time and then i reappeared almost instantly so this is a uh, that's that's good to keep in mind tier two on the left side here is called escape hatch uh when you exit the portal like reappearing you gain th uh, 15 armor for three seconds this is um this is only gives you the armor if you reappear. It does not give you armor on uh, getting out of the portal normally. So if I go back in and I don't reactivate it, and then I hop back out, I don't get armor. But if I wait until it comes back on cooldown, and then I'll reappear, uh, then that's when you get the armor. This is an okay upgrade. Um, I don't think there's really any reason to prioritize this. Uh, it is just a nice little buffer of 15 armor. It basically doubles your armor because Grizama has 15 armor anyway. Um, and since it is like full armor, it would also increase your back armor by 15. So this uh, this can really help if you like are super quickly on the run and like your back is going to be exposed because you're running away. So you're taking less damage from the front and the back. And it, it, it can come in clutch if you really, really need it. But I don't really think it's that necessary. The other side of this upgrade tree tier two is called portal collapse using your e a second time will stun enemies that are near the exit location for one and a half seconds now this upgrade this is actually really really strong um just remember though that you are technically you are technically getting rid of the uh chance to summon another portal beast with your e because that's on the other upgrade tree like the other upgrade path um but this is a this is a really nice kind of large area of effect. Okay, see that blue ring? Like, everyone that was in that blue ring would have gotten stunned. So they do have to be somewhat close together, but you can use this and, like, catch out, like, two, three people. And it, the stun, a, a second and a half's worth of stun is actually really, really strong. Like, the only other person that has one and a half seconds worth of stun in this game is Margrave, and that is another, like, tier two upgrade that you invest in. And some would argue that's not even like the better side of his of his tree for uh, for his leap, but this is this is this is really strong and just kind of slept on. I I wouldn't kind of prioritize this because it also puts you in a lot of danger. Like it forces you to be melee, basically for that brief moment. 
Um, and Griselma does not have a big health pool. She doesn't have a lot of defenses. So this it can really like turn the tide on her. But this is a this is a nice little fun tool to really catch people off guard. It's like a really good um really good like follow up engage or even like an initial engage. I, I do think that this is a, a fun ability, but it's not it's not super great. It's just really fun if you want to play that play style. It's just kind of a, a high risk, high reward sort of upgrade. And finally, we have the focus upgrades. So on the left side here, tier one, we have a very, a very rare and interesting upgrade called fringe benefits. Um, I do believe that only one other person in the game gets this. Uh, but what this upgrade does is you gain a passive amount of armor that is specifically against long and medium ranged attacks. And I actually, I actually was under the impression that this didn't work for the longest amount of time. It's really interesting because there's not really a distinction. Like there's not, there's not something that distinguishes what is considered a long range or medium range attack. You just kind of have to, you just kind of have to, you know, eyeball it, I guess it, it I'll, I'll show you really quick. So watch if I, if I summon this little Cerberus kind of point, oops, kind of point blank here with his fireball should do about 106 and if i'm further away i'll wait till he resets and then i'll just stand about here and he'll attack me again that also did 106 so now i'm going to pick fringe benefits and then i'll go in here i'll let him do an attack against me that did 106 and then i'm going to go over here and have him attack those shots did 93 so you see, it's just kind of, it's kind of, it's just, it's just really weird. And there's, there's no like animation effect that shows up. There's no, you know, buff indicator that shows up that says, uh, you got that value, but the, it just, the damage gets reduced. It's a, it's a real interesting one. I, I don't know how useful it'll be like in the long run. I mean, I guess it technically gives you heavy armor against medium and long range attacks, so that could be nice. I I don't know. I I this one is this one's really weird to me, and it's just the fact that it's such a so limited. It's only on two people. Um, it's just it's just weird. Uh, but anyway, uh, tier two on the left side we have acrobatics. Uh, we have seen acrobatics. Um, actually, have we seen acrobatics on? Actually, I think Ashlyn has acrobatics. But anyway, what acrobatics does is it reduces dodge stamina cost by twenty percent. So normally dodges cost 25 stamina. Uh, dodges will now cost 20 stamina, which means that you can do a total of five dodges if you're on full to empty. So normally you can only do four. With that, you can do five. And just, you know, because uh, because those dodges are a little bit, uh, cost a little bit less, you know, you can, you can kind of combine them with doing, you know, jumps as well. And then if you want the slap, like melee granny, you can combine them with... Uh, jump attacks dodge attacks all that sort of stuff it's a really nice uh, simple easy to understand ability and then we have lifeline here on the tier two lifeline is a really really strong upgrade in my opinion it is strong on almost everyone that has access to it and it's actually a really really common upgrade uh, but basically lifeline increases 20 uh, all healing that you receive by 20 percent, and then your health regeneration that is outside of combat is also 20 percent faster so healing from all healing from all instances onto yourself is really really powerful and then um just getting your health faster as well when you're out of combat on its own is crazy like this is all of the frontliners have this except for uh paco um like zenobia has this grizelma has this and like maybe two other people maybe three other people have access to this it's really good on all of them so this healing will be th this healing is just like Receiving heals, say from like Vadasi or Sven. This is the self healing that you can do on other upgrades in your trees. This is healing from this healing from Bloomer Bleam, Bloomer Beams, uh, Bloomer Blooms. Um, it just it's it's really really good. The, the the health orbs that spawn on on player kills, like this is a really really strong upgrade. I I really like Lifeline a lot. Um, but you kind of you kind of see if I I'll just do this as an example. Um. What was it? It was Touch of the Master. Yeah. So the Touch of the Master normally did 35 healing. And then if I uh, if I take a little bit of damage, you'll kind of see the floating text increase. That's 42 healing. That's 7 healing per instance. And it's it's about 
four it's about 84 healing per second because that's kind of Grizelma almost makes two attacks within a second it's a little bit slower than that but still like this is this is really good i i i love lifeline a lot of people don't think about lifeline that much it's really really strong a really really strong talent on everyone that has access to it so you know it, just kind of my own um my my own little opinion here if you have lifeline on, on one of the heroes that you like playing like i highly recommend checking it out and seeing how it plays because you might be really surprised and on the other side of the upgrade tree for the focus we have the tier one masterful focus buff support will be focus gained by 100 percent very simple uh upgrade very powerful upgrade actually um the portal beast will just generate double focus that's the long and short of it so uh you may have noticed throughout the course of this video when the portal beasts were attacking they already have like a ton of <laughs> they already have quite a lot of uh focus generation so i just kind of do this really quick you can kind of see that bar increases pretty quickly and it and definitely increases even faster like if i'm also attacking because then they're also attacking faster like look how fast that's actually building and then I'm going to take this upgrade. And watch. Watch that bar. Look how fast that's filling up. I'm almost going to generate a full focus just by killing Gnosis like twice here. It's Grizelma has crazy focus generation with this upgrade. And it's such low investment. It's like a, it's tier one. Like I, I have a focus for killing one and a half Gnosis's. And one of those was before I even got the upgrade. So this is this really strong low investment tier one. Very, very good. Um, going on to the tier two here, we have focus might. This is one of those upgrades. Um, this is one of those upgrades that requires you to cast the focus before he gains the benefits. Uh, but anyway, when you use your focus, you gain 7% basic attack damage until you're, till you die. This sacks twice for a total of 14% bonus damage. This, uh, this is not very good on Grizelma. This is very good on someone else that might have access to it. So, uh, Grizelma's basic attack damage is her little beam on her on her left mouse button or the little slaps if you take that one upgrade. So uh, having a damage boost sounds really nice. You know, you have a you have that there. You have the little icon here on the left next to my health bar that shows that I have more damage, but the damage is negligible. <laughs> With 14% bonus to uh what is it? 12 like 12, 12 post mitigation on the adult bloomer. It's just this is this is not a good upgrade. I I do not recommend uh, this one. It actually might be in contention for her worst upgrade, but uh, this is uh, this is not a good one. I I don't think that you should ever get focus might for any reason. The other one, on the other hand, perseverance. Uh, after you use your focus for four seconds, you gain 75 healing per second, which totals out to 300 healing over four seconds, and you gain immunity to interrupts for four seconds. Now, this this says immunity to interrupts, and I'm going to go over here actually and show you. Um, it's actually full immunity to hit reactions, so this would give you immunity to like stun, uh, daze, launch, and interrupt. So this is uh this is actually way stronger than it actually appears because it gives the impression that it's only interrupts. No, it's actually all it's actually all crowd control. So watch, I'm gonna get hit right here by the stun Motiga. I get stunned, and then I'm gonna use my focus. I don't get stunned. You you become a you could you become completely immune to all crowd control, and you're now healing yourself 75 healing a second. This is a really good uh, upgrade. This is um. It's actually I didn't know until I was recording this or like getting ready to record this video that it was actually full hit reaction immunity. It only says interrupts. So don't get confused by that. It's actually full immunity to, to all uh, to, to all hit reactions. Really, really strong. Very simple to use, too. So that is it for the upgrades on the abilities themselves. Now let's go over the Clash Talents. So just a brief reminder, Clash Talents unlock at level 5, and it's basically a third upgrade to one of your three abilities, whether your right mouse button, your Q, or your E. Um, just please remember that this is here. A lot of people keep forgetting that they have this. This was a very common problem in the original Gigantic. It still kind of is now. Uh, but please remember that you have a Clash Talent, because it gives you an effect immediately, and then it gives you an effect when Clash starts. Well, anyway, here on the first one, we have Beast Friends, which is the RMB upgrade. 
decreases the summon time of your right mouse button, and then summoning your creature also restores 10 stamina. Then after Clash, the first attack that a summoned Portal Beast does will give you instantly 10% of your focus bar. So this is a this is a pretty strong one. Um, the de the decrease summon time is a little bit uh, weirdly worded. Um, it makes you it kind of makes you think that you have an increased cooldown when in fact it is really just a faster animation for the summon itself. So if I uh I'm gonna take it back really quick. You kind of see if I summon here. There's like a brief delay that it spawns in and then it starts attacking. Then I'm gonna take Beast Friends and then so uh, summon in another one. And you watch, it's actually much faster. It's like almost instant that it uh, comes in and starts attacking. So this is, um, it's pretty good. I, I do think that all three of, of Griselma's uh, upgrades are pretty, pretty nice. Um, this one definitely has the most immediate effect. And anything that restores stamina is also like in contentious for just being really good. Because stamina is by far the most valuable resource in this game. So if you, you know, if you grant yourself extra stamina, I mean, 10 stamina is not a lot, but it is something that can, you know, prevent you from running out in a very clutch situation. I do think that this is a good one. Um, but with the builds that I'm going to give at the end of the video, I actually don't really use it that often at all. Uh, but anyway, next upgrade is called Zoned Out. Zoned Out increases the area of uh, the area size of the rift zone. So it normally is a 2.5 meter radius. And then with this upgrade, it is a 3.5 meter radius, which doesn't sound like it's that much. But when I kind of show the area size, when I show this, um, it's a, actually a pretty nice increase. Um, and then after Clash, on creation, it deals 150 damage. So the initial damage that it does when it first opens now does an extra 150 damage on top of the 80 damage that it does. So this is... This is a weird one, um, but I do like it. I do think that the area size increase is something worth considering because watch, it's you know that's the normal, that's the normal radius, and then I'm gonna pick up the upgrade. It's a lot bigger. You know, this is a uh, this is something that you could consider if you you know take like this one for example, like the shattered rift side of the tree, uh, and then you kind of want to go in and then do the uh, shattered rift stumbling block combo. This is more commonly, uh, this makes it a lot easier to actually hit a bunch of people at once because now the whole space is much larger. Uh, and then the extra damage is really cool too. So it's just, you know, I, I I don't think that the clash talent of this, or I don't think that the clash portion of this talent is really super powerful. Um, but like if you, have a, if you have a team that really caters to like being able to keep the space or like keep them in that space, like you can really... You can really like have good mileage off of this upgrade. And then finally, the last talent is called Phase Variance. Uh, phase Variance is your E talent. Increases the movement speed while you're inside your portal. And then with an active portal beast post-clash, uh, you will heal yourself instantly for 300. This is a this is actually one of my personal favorites uh, for Grizoma. I do again, I do think all three of these are like have good uh, contention for being picked uh fully depends on your build and kind of what you're doing and what's happening in the game uh but this one is just kind of my recommendation for if you're starting to learn how to play grizama um the movement speed increase is actually far larger than it it seems uh because watch in the portal you know itself not a lot of movement there it's it's not very fast movement at all but i'm gonna pick the upgrade i'm gonna pick the talent and watch once it comes back off cooldown like you'll notice the difference of the of the movement speed here it is actually kind of shocking but watch it just you know it's it's kind of around the same speed as like normal in combat movement speed watch like look how look how much of a difference that is you just you, you get so much more ground i i think it actually makes it so that you move at normal movement speed while you're inside but it just this is a this is a really good upgrade, and then the extra healing uh, from it, because it already heals fifty per second, uh, which will give you four ticks of healing. Because it kind of it it only lasts three seconds, but it does like an immediate tick of healing, and then it'll do a, a tick of healing while you're inside. So that's actually five hundred healing over the course of the four seconds, which is about a third of Grizama's health. 
it just this is a this is really good of uh staying power if you get jumped and believe me as Grizzama, you're probably going to get jumped pretty often this is just you know it lets you stay in it lets you stay in the fight longer you know if you have any upgrades that give immediate benefits for uh being in the portal like gift of annihilation i just is it's really really good all right, so now that we've gone over all the upgrades and the talents, now we're going to get into the two example builds that I've made for you guys. Now, again, I want to preface this by saying, if you have a build that works for you, by all means, please use it. If it, if it, if it is effective for the way that you play the game, that you, you know, and you're having success with it, like, I am I am not enforcing you to play these builds. I'm making these builds strictly because I believe that they are uh, easy access builds that are good for beginners. They're very easy to utilize and understand. And you know when you get when you get further and further into playing the character, if you want to main the character, then you can start kind of branching out and make your own builds. And uh, that's you know that's that's again just sort of my default PSA for everybody here that is watching these. So the first build is what I am going to call the all zaps build. Uh, this is kind of a build that revolves around really, really going like homing in super hard on the nest granny, uh, kind of, you know, picking one spot somewhere on the map and saying, this is where I'm going to be. And if you come in, it is your doom. So the level one of this upgrade is Mark of the Master. This immediately just gives you the extra benefits of having your hands apply shock. It is an immediate damage increase, like damage output. Uh, just having the two hands be able to attack and then also apply shock. And then your beam is doing attacks. Uh, the hands are attacking very quickly. Like this is this is already a huge damage increase just, just in one level. Number two is going to be ambush hands. The ambush hands will, you know, th this is uh, this is kind of the bread and butter of the Griselma nest because now you can put the hands that are uh, the hands that are invisible so long as they're idle, and they're basically going to be permanently at full health at any time that they're not fighting so long as they don't get destroyed. And since they are invisible, since they are invisible, you can actually trick people into thinking that maybe perhaps you actually don't have your hands set up. And then once they jump in, they're immediately getting attacked and realizing like, oh, hey, I actually can't stay here for very long or I'm just going to melt. And uh, since they're invisible as well, um, you can't like directly target them with a ability that requires like the direct target, uh, say like a beam attack. They'll, they'll still have like a shimmer effect, so like good good players will be able to kind of spot the hands that are hidden. But uh, if they're like not somewhere obviously like located, like wherever you're defending, if they're not out in the obvious, um, they'll be a lot harder to spot. Level three is going to be conservation of mass. This is just, again, more uptime on your portal beast. This is a this is a damage focused Griselma. And damage focus Guzamo needs her hands to be alive as often as possible. So you really just kind of want to have the backup of if one of your hands get destroyed in your nest, then you have a second option. Because, you know, again, if, if a portal beast gets destroyed, then your RMB goes on cooldown if you didn't summon a second one in time. So it's just kind of a fail safe in case that gets destroyed. And then number four is going to be Gift of Annihilation. And this is more the main reason why you wanted to get that E talent very uh, quickly. Because this allows you, um, like I said earlier, when I when I explained how this upgrade works, the DPS that you get from getting this upgrade makes it so that even while you're hiding, your hands are basically keeping up for the damage that you are like that you're no longer providing because you're in the uh, because you're in the E. Uh, you know the the damage that you do with the shock with the hands attacking fast, like it's really really good. But if you get jumped on and you're losing some health and you need to get out of there like super quick or reposition. Uh, your hands will still be able to keep up the damage while you're gone. This is very, very, uh, very good. Level five is going to be back on the right mouse button. We're going to get Smashing Hands. Smashing Hands is uh, a broken armor. 
Remember, it's not cracked armor. It's actually broken armor whenever they exit stealth. So they can hit one person or maybe they'll hit two people, depending on how you've kind of placed them in, in the space. And then those two people are immediately taking 25% increased damage from all sources. That includes you. That includes, you know, maybe the creature that's currently on that point, any other ally that's there defending you. This is a... Uh, this is really nice. It's a uh, very simple. This is probably like the one through five every single time. Um, and I'll I'll when I when I get to the uh, upgrade kind of near the end here, I'll I'll sort of explain when you can actually and en might end up taking it sooner. Uh, also at level five, we're actually going to pick up either beast friends or phase variants. And the reason you kind of want to consider beast friends is because you really want. Uh, you really want the beast to be attacking just as often as you can, because again, this is about the damage. This is a this is a damage focused build, so you need the hands to be on. You need the hands to be attacking fast, but you can also consider phase variants just because I do think that phase variants uh, is just really, it's really beginner friendly. It's really safe. You know, the extra movement is super nice. The extra healing after clash is nice. But uh, this one, this one really ties in as well with uh, the level six that I'm going to be getting because this increases your focus gain as well for every creature that you summon. Or the the first, the first portal beast attack for a fresh spawn one will give you extra focus. So for the sake of this build, we're going to get beast friends. Level six is going to be masterful focus, doubles your focus uh, gain from your portal beast attacks. Don't really need much more explanation after that. You know you're going to be you're going to be generating your focus super fast with this build. Level seven is going to be Element of Surprise. Element of Surprise is just a, a very nice, you know, kind of ties into what I said just a moment ago about like, you know, the portal beasts get brought in super fast. So they'll start attacking even faster, which means that they're going to get more uh, benefit from having that extra, that double damage bonus for those four seconds when you summon it from a portal. Uh, and then level eight is going to be a double dip here in the queue again for Soothing Journey. So your hands are going to be prioritized and you want them to survive as long as you can, especially uh, especially by this level. Like a lot of the characters in the game are going to have their extra tools, like their extra damage or their extra CC, their extra AOE, like whatever it might be. Um, they, you're, you're going to want your hands to survive a little bit better, if at all possible. So a 500 HP buffer health is really, really strong and, and very easy to understand why you would pick it. Level nine is going to be Mark of Survival. Mark of Survival is something that you could pick up much sooner if you feel like you're getting jumped on very often. Like you could probably get this around level five, maybe level six, maybe even as early as level four if you really, really feel like you need it. But uh, this is just, again, like the sticking power. Like, again, the, the spanked damage, like the other upgrade here, the damage increase is negligible. You're really not doing too much more with this so you might as well get the extra benefits of just being able to stay in fights as long as you can so it's all the damage that you're doing the shock you know the the armor the armor break from doing the out of a stealth attack and then now you're also healing for 75 a second just for attacking somebody you know it's 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 really it's really it's really good your level 10 is going to be perseverance i you know i've already said my my um I've said my piece on focus might you really really don't need this for any reason so you might as well get perseverance because it's just the better of the two just full immunity to crowd control oh my god it is very very nice um just something to keep in mind though because of perseverance is healing over time and mark of survival is also healing over time it's not going to double dip but the the increase is the increase is going to be small it's still going to be around like seven bonus healing maybe seven or eight healing every second so around um around 82 83 so it's not a ton but it is just you know any extra number is going to be helpful in the long run uh just just good to know but that is that is the build so like i said now that i've had the full build here i will show you actually how much damage this does so if i summon my portal beast right here then you know just attack for a little while apply that shock you know you you see this is actually doing quite a bit i'll summon the second one so now they're both attacking now we're applying shock and then they're gonna enter stealth they do that broken armor effect 
So now we're doing even more damage. Look how long that lasted. Look how quickly Nos is melted just from getting attacked like that. And then they go right back into stealth and they stay at full health basically permanently so long as they don't get destroyed. Even if they get focused a little bit, if they don't actually die, you're basically like just doing this all the time. And watch. When they exit, I'll summon another one. Oh, I, I might have actually did it a little too quickly. But the idea is generally that you want to kind of have the queue open. And then when one of your portal beasts applies the broken armor, you want to summon a second one like right away. So watch. So now that one has extra damage. Just it's it's insane like how much damage output Grizzly can actually have. I just think the problem with this build is that it, it's less flexible than the other one that I'm going to give you. Uh, because it's really hard to actually move around and set up in different spots. Or like uh, siege attacks. Like if there's only one neutral uh, middle objective and you lose it, it's kind of really hard to regain ground here with this upgrade. Or with the, with this build. I mean, it's, it is possible, but it, it's just a lot harder to do. And then watch, I'll even go further. Um, I'll wait till the next one, actually, because you'll see. You'll see when I do it. So I'll, I'll, I'll have Gnosis respawn again. And I'm going to throw this down. Some of that, and then that. Just, it's really, really strong. You know, it just, I don't, I don't really know what else to tell you. Like, that's just kind of how the build works. It's just a little silly. I do that, and you can even throw in your focus a little bit right there. And then, you know, the, the focus knocks them away. I, I'm really not, like, a huge fan of Grizzelma's focus, <laughs> in all honesty. Uh, but, you know... The, the the immediate impact and then the launch like it's really good at like scattering if you have access to it you know you might as well use it in this full combo just keep in mind that you know you're sort of pushing enemies away uh from what's going on uh, sometimes or sometimes you know you'll you'll push them into your team which is even better but still it's a it's an interesting focus it's not my favorite in the game but i i do think it has some really like little neat niche uses Just, yeah, look at that. Look how much damage we're doing. It's it's so nice. Here is the too long didn't watch version of build number one. Level one is Mark of the Master. Level two is Ambush Hands. Level three is Conservation of Mass. And then level four, Immediate Double Dip, Gift of Annihilation. Level five is going to be Smashing Hands. And you're also going to get Beast Friends or Phase Variants. This build is going to get Beast Friends, though, just for the sake of this video. Level 6 is going to be Masterful Focus. Level 7 is Element of Surprise. Level 8 is Soothing Journey. Level 9 is Mark of Survival. And you can get Mark of Survival earlier if you need to. Just something to know. And then level 10 is Perseverance. And that's the build. The second build that I'm going to give for you guys is what I'm going to be calling the All uh, Slaps build. So the first one is All Zaps. The second one is All Slaps. This build is kind of a... It's an interesting, fun one. Um, kind of utilizes more of the supportive style of, of uh, Grizama, but also has a little bit of touch of, you know, secondary engage, even going as far as maybe even being like an off tank. And that's a that's a weird thing to say, especially with the squishy Grizama uh, health pool. But, uh, just go with me on it uh, with this. Go with, go with me on it. So level one is going to be touch of the master. This is immediate, you know, just... Extra healing for the hands. Again, you know, regardless of the build that you end up going for Grizelma, the important thing is to make sure that your hands survive. You know, your your hands are by far probably the most important thing. Just just not even not even probably. Like your hands are the most important thing to your kit. You need them to survive as long as you can. Level two, we're gonna get Bestial Aura. Gives you little auras on your hands, which allows, you know, you and your teammates to effectively just have extra stats for those early skirmishes. Any extra benefit that you could have, like in the first levels of the game, those primary team fights, uh, just probably the most impactful. So you want to consider them super early because this is just this it's just nice little buffer to have for your team when they fight over like neutral objectives or if they have to go like go and move and defend something or uh if they're trying to keep, you know, if they're trying to keep control of something, just it's, it's free extra stats and it's it's really easy to utilize, especially since you go, you know, the slap build, which 
we'll keep these things alive forever. They just they'll they'll stay alive forever. Then level three is going to be either bestial attunement or bestial feast. If the enemy has a ton and ton of debuffs and degenerations, you can consider bestial feast for sure. I think the I think the easier one to do, like the more consistent upgrade on this tree, is bestial attunement. It's not like it's not crazy bonuses. Like it's five extra five extra damage. Yeah, five five percent extra damage and five extra armor. It's not incredible, but the 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 real benefit of this is the fact that they will linger when they leave the hands. It allows your allies to be more mobile instead of forcing them to stay in one position, like in in the back somewhere, or like kind of have this space where you're trying to have the creature like stay within the ring so that the creature can do more damage. You know, it's it's hard to use just the tier one. And again, the bestial feast weirdly enforces like this play style where you have to put one of the hands behind something so that it's not attacking because remember it doesn't actually cleanse if it's in the middle of attacking or doing something like it, it has to be idle and then it can detect that something is uh something is wrong and, and it purifies it from you and, and don't get me wrong like again purify is really really strong and 200 healing for getting purified is also pretty good I just think this is more consistent and I would pick it probably every single time. Unless there was just like unless every single person on the enemy team had some sort of debuff or, or degeneration, like then maybe, but I think this is the, the better one. Level four is gonna be Masterful Focus. Masterful Focus is just still really good because um you want to you you really want to still generate your focus as often as you can. Because the the focus, you know, it, it's just really about the scattering and the zone control. Because the big hand just it, the big hand's damage will add up over time. So you want to have your focus as as often as possible, just because it's adding more to the damage that you're doing and just the capability. You know, Grizelma is like this weird aggressive support uh, support that is also like about zone control, and she's she's just this weird mixed bag, and she's not like. I don't know. She's very weird. I, I still don't think that she's great regardless of the build that I'm going to give you. But, uh, you know, these builds will work. They like I found success with them. You probably can find success with them and you can make it happen if you if you really try hard. Just I still think that she's really team dependent and that's kind of the big problem with her. Anyway, level five is going to be shielding touch. Shielding touch will give you that extra uh, armor to your hands whenever you slap them. They'll give you the extra armor to uh, you and the hands whenever you slap somebody and since you're combining this with uh since you're combining this with bestial attunement you're actually sitting at the 15 armor that you already have from just your character stats then you have 15 extra armor for standing near a hand and then you have 20 extra armor just for attacking something so you're actually sitting at 50 armor just like almost constantly if you're sitting next to a hand and like slapping something or slapping uh, your hands or your hands will basically uh, have around somewhere around 35 to 45 armor just for existing. I actually don't know how much armor the hands have. I don't know if anyone has really tested that. Um, they probably have. And, you know, anyway, level six is this is where it's going to get weird. Oh, sorry. Level five as well. We're going to get phase variants. I think phase variants is just better for this because you want it, just the survival. It, the survival on its own is just really, really nice. Being able to move faster. And also heal yourself if you have a beast active. It's just, it's free healing. It's a lot of free healing. I don't, I don't know why you wouldn't use this if you, if if you at all can. However, I will say that with this build, and and I'll explain why when we get there. This build can see use with the zoned out talent as well. Just the the increase the size of what I'm about to show you, uh, the increased Q size, really can. Uh, do a lot of impact just a surprising amount of burst if you decide to do it this way but for the sake of this build we're actually just going to get phase variants just to be consistent with what i'm saying uh then level six is going to be exit strategy this is where it gets weird we're going to do exit strategy and then level seven is going to be portal collapse essentially what you're doing now with these two upgrades is that you're looking for those points where the enemy team is kind of grouped together and you're wanting to go in and stun as many of them as you can and because you can move faster, because of your clash talent, you know you have that extra movement speed. 
you can really really close the uh you can really close the gap surprisingly quick and then get a second and a half stun really good initial engage really good follow-up engage like i said it's just it's a lot of fun it's a little weird it's a little it's a little risky but i think that this is i've i've used this i found success with it it's just it's really really fun to do and then following suit right after that is going to be level eight shattering rift and then level nine is stumbling block and this is just i'll show you the combo when we get to it when i go over back to nasus but uh, that's just, it adds to the extra CC. It's easy to follow suits with, uh, with you know, putting your portal down after you jump out of the rift and then you can put down the uh, the queue and then put down a thing. And then it's just, it, it's all rapid succession. And level 10, again, is going to be Perseverance. Perseverance just gives you the CC immunity. It gives you the healing over time. Um, and since you're going to be melee with this build, you know, it's having the immunity the, to full CC can really really save your life in some really uh, bad situations so um the only thing i could say about this build before i get over to the other side shielding touch is something that you can take a lot sooner if you feel or rather sorry if this shielding touch is something that you can take a lot later if you find yourself not being attacked that often um just because if you're not getting jumped then you're not really getting the benefits of the extra armor and if like, you know, if your hands aren't really being focused, you can you can maybe get this around maybe, I don't know, level level eight, maybe a little bit earlier. This is a the, the it, I do think that this is the safest way to do it, though, because you want to have your hands still alive. Like this gives you stats. It gives uh, the hand stats. They just you just want to keep them alive. And it's very simple. Um, the only thing I could say, maybe masterful focus, you can end up taking a little bit later if you really, really want to, but I don't recommend it just because you kind of want to have, you, you want to have your focus. Like, Griselma generates focus super quickly, so you might as well just take advantage of that, especially if your hands are surviving and attacking as, as often as they can. But anyway, here is, here here's kind of the combo of, of what this build does. So let's say, let's say like three people are kind of gathered around Nasus right there. It's Nasus and two others, I should say. If I go in, look at the amount of CC that I just did, like, instantly. And then now they all have broken armor. They got stunned, they got dazed, they all have broken armor, and now I have a hand attacking. And I'm also getting healing from, you know, just slapping it. I'm getting, uh, I'm getting focus. And even if you just do it this way, like, it's still really good. You just kind of slap it like that. This is a, this is a, it's an interesting build. It's, it's a lot of fun. Just watch. Like just the amount of CC that you can do. And it's all rapid succession. It's just, you go in, you, you, you put down E or sorry, you hit E and then you find this place where you want to target, hit E again, immediately put down Q and right mouse button in rapid succession. And you can even throw down your focus if you have it. Oh, they if <laughs> Mario Nasus can't respond because I put the portal beast there. That's hilarious. I didn't know that was a thing. I wonder if I'll actually respond at all. There we go. There he is. I didn't know that was a thing. That's hilarious. Um, but yeah, just even if I don't do that combo, like you're still doing a lot of good damage here. And if you get focused, like yeah, you're you're probably gonna start getting you you're gonna start getting low because again, Griselma doesn't have like amazing defenses. She doesn't have a big health pool. She's actually like borderline with the most squishiest characters. But I'll just I'll just do the full combo again. Just look at that. Look at all that I just did. <laughs> just, they're, they're they're completely scattered. I dazed. I stunned. I launched them. Like it's it's a lot of fun to do that build. And you know, it's it's just it's just fun. I love it. It's just it's really 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 strong and, and fun and uh kind of combines a lot of interesting things that not a lot of people will expect to do with Grizelma. anyway quick version of build number two level one is going to be touch of the master level two is bestial aura level three is bestial feast or bestial attunement but we're going to get bestial attunement for the sake of this level four is masterful focus level five is shielding touch level six is exit strategy seven is portal collapse 
Level 8 is Shattered Rift. Level 9, Stumbling Block. And level 10 is Perseverance. And then your Clash Talent, you can get Phase Variance or Zoned Out if you want to. But for the sake of this video, we're going to get Phase Variance. And that's the build. Thank you guys for watching this Grizelma deep dive. I know it was probably a long one. And Grizelma's a little... Grizelma's weird. She's, she's a very interesting character. And I still don't think that she's a great character. But these two builds, I hope you find... Uh, I hope you find that they were helpful. I hope you found just the whole video informative because, uh, yeah, she's got she's got a lot of weird ones in here. You know, <laughs> Grisoma's Grisoma's fun, but she's also just weird. But anyway, thank you for watching. Uh, I hope you have a good day, and I will see you guys in the next one.